Hi everyone, my name is John Corbett, there's some people who know me, Corbett Mavs, and in this video I'm going to talk about how we can promote primary Mavs at home. Now I'm obviously a Mavs teacher and I've trained as a Mavs teacher and taught secondary Mavs, A-level Mavs, I used to do a lot of primary school teaching of Mavs as well in terms of outreach for our primary schools and so on. So I used to teach the whole range of ability of Mavs and ages, but what's interesting is I'm also a parent and I've got an eight-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy and I, particularly during lockdown, I taught my girl during home learning and that was a fantastic opportunity, but also I've been supporting the Mavs that she's been learning in school at home and she's actually loving her Mavs, she's flourishing with her mathematics and it's just, it's great that it's one of her favourite subjects as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video share some of the ideas and strategies that we use at home to help our both of our children with their mathematics. So first of all, one of the things I would say is, is what we said. Now, luckily for me, I love maths, but whenever I used to do parents' evenings and things like that, a lot of parents would come in and say, oh, I hate maths, or I really struggle with maths, and my kid struggles too. And you could just see that there's that sense of they didn't like maths and the child doesn't like maths as well. And we've got to be very careful about what we say about maths and other things as parents with our children. Um, for instance, English wasn't necessarily my forte in school, but as you can see here at the kitchen table, and that's what I'm filming this video in the kitchen because that's where we do a lot of our maths at home. So it's not always the tidiest, and I want to show you that this is what it's normally like. Um, as you can see here at the kitchen table, we've got different uh, you know, verbs, nouns, adjectives, and I've been learning recently a bit about adverbs and seeing you know, go through that with my daughter at home. And you know, even though it's not necessarily my forte in English, it's one of the things that sort of as a parent, I want to be saying, oh, hey, we can do this, and we can look at this, and we can work this out together. So it's just important, I would say, is whenever you're talking about mathematics at home, to try and speak positively about it about it what we say about maths really counts and it's important that you know that we sort of speak positively about maths because if we have a positive outlook our children may have positive outlooks as well and that's, that's quite important okay next the next thing i would say about maths particularly primary maths is to make it fun you don't necessarily want to bring out big textbooks with loads of exercises and say okay let's start at this this is great fun because with primary school children they might not necessarily find that as much fun as we do um so what i would say is make it fun and get and hands on as well so for instance if you're baking cake to get your son or daughter to measure out the milk and to you know measure out 600 milliliters of milk and to be talking about the different units and the numbers on, on the on the, the spread on the scale whenever they're measuring it obviously weighing out their flour and talking about the measurements there but you know to have hands-on maps um, also for instance if you're doing things like you know playing with Lego at home uh, whenever I play Lego with my son um, if I was doing a little pattern I might do or building a house I might do orange brown orange brown orange I said like, well, what should I use next and he'll say brown or I might make more complicated patterns when we like red green blue red green I said what color should I use next and so on so you know using hands on maps and trying to make it as fun as possible maybe sneaking it in so they don't even realize you're talking about maps games games are a fantastic way to do maps at home and in a fun way as well at a younger age we used to use these, those orchard tree games where you do matching things but even things like snakes and ladders and rolling the dice and moving the places the right number of the pieces the right number of places i've also got some other dice which go from zero up to nine so we sometimes use those for bigger numbers and that's quite cool and um, so games like snakes and ladders monopoly junior monopoly is a good one or we sometimes use monopoly monopoly you're uh, the you know what and we talk about the money and how much they should have to pay or how much change you might get from the banker and things like that so particularly our eight-year-old we would use you know monopoly games like that this is quite a cool one the menko it's a bit like scrabble but it's with numbers and you can do different calculations and whatever the answer is is your score so if you can put a times 10 in front of it and put a zero on the answer it's quite a it's a good way to steal some points but new menko is quite a cool game but games at home another one i would say is playing cards um, we would play games like Jack Change It and say, obviously you talk about strategies and two, pick up two, put a two on the top of that, pick up four. And we're talking about things like that, the like queen change direction um, and strategies. Um, but also things like where we maybe take a card and turn over two cards and say, well, here we've got um, eight and a five. Okay, so what's eight plus five? Oh, it's 13, fantastic. Or can you do eight times five? That's 40. And what I sometimes do is I go through the deck with my daughter, we're just playing, uh, where I would just turn over two cards, so 10 times seven, 70, fantastic. Three times three, nine. One times eight, and so on. And if you get a jack or a queen or a king, I tell them I don't just use those as tens, uh, just to keep it simple. Uh, but you can do that. Also, you can do things like, you know, what's the sum, you could do what's the product, what's the difference between them. Even you could talk about positive and negative numbers where the red cards are negative and the black cards are positive and things like that. Um, but I'm gonna be making another video dedicated to playing cards and different maps, games, activities you can do with playing cards, and so it's pretty cool. Okay, so games, 
Scrabble, or sorry, Nomenko, your Snakes and Ladders, Monopoly, anything really, and it's all about the Mavs involved in it. Also, I'd say the Mavs around us. So for instance, whenever you're walking down the street and you notice that the house numbers on one side go two, four, six, and say, well, what do you think the next one's gonna be? Eight, oh, they're all even number. What about the other side of the road? Oh, they go one, three, nine. Oh, they're odd numbers. Is it like that where we live? No, ours just go in the normal numbers and so, like in the, you know, the normal pattern of numbers and so on. And we talk about odds and evens in the miles around us. Perhaps if you're on a walk and you notice a sign saying 40 miles per hour, I said, well, if I'm driving at 40 miles per hour, how far should I go in two hours if I drive that speed? 80 miles and just to introduce some things like that talking about the miles around you uh, for instance if you're swimming in the local swimming pool with your child and it's a 25 meter pool I'll say well if I do four lengths what would that be or you know if I wanted to swim 300 meters how many lengths would that be or perhaps if you're in a like the other day we were in a drive through queue for McDonald's and we were looking at the number plates ahead it was after junior park runs so that's okay but on the number plate ahead of us and we had a number and I said can you run that to the nearest hundreds can you run that to the nearest thousands or or we had four digits, can you add those four digits up? But just to look at the miles around us and just sort of asking questions, we went to a Belfast Giants ice hockey match and I said, how many people do you think would fit into the stadium? And just add, add that estimation or playing games like, how do you think 30 seconds is? Can you estimate 30 seconds? Okay, let's see who can get the closest and playing little games like that. So just taking the miles around us and just trying to make it as fun as possible. So what I would say is what we say counts, making it fun, definitely a key thing for primary maths. Okay, resources. So I've got some hands-on resources that I would have used whenever we were doing home learning, but also things that I just use as part of our support and homework and things like that. As I said, we've got a four-year-old son, so we're doing things like addition with him at the minute, and we would use things like these Numenco, or Numenco, Numicon. And these Numicon are really useful, where you've got from one to 10, you've got this board, and if we were doing things such as two plus three, you can see that's equal to five, and we would maybe do the story of five, where we've got one plus four, and three plus two, and two plus three, and, and so on. And you know, these boards are quite useful. He, whenever he used to watch number blocks, will do one, two, three, and so on, just arrange them in order, and instead of just get used to the numbers in terms of the size of them um, but we found those uh, uh, Numicon very useful also things such as clocks now this is a bought one but our daughter made a fantastic one her teacher gave her the task which was fantastic using a paper plate and doing the numbers around the outside of the plate and using two pieces of card and making the hands of the clock and putting in one of those little uh, golden things you know the things you put in you fold out I can't remember the name of them and they were fantastic in terms of making a clock and we would use that a lot in terms of telling the time and having those physical resources are great um, having these little blocks where we've got the ones tens hundreds and the cube for the, the thousands and we would talk about comparing numbers that way and that's quite a good resource so these resources are quite useful resources that we've used at home to support our learning that they're doing in class also little books as well so here we've got this one called look twice and it's all to do with symmetry and i picked that up from i think it's a website called Tartan or something like that and it's a fantastic resource where you can use sort of the little mirror and you can look for different patterns and stuff using symmetry and this one was quite a nice one we use tt rockstars with our daughter and she she's eight but she's known our times tables up to draw times tables really quickly and she knows them inside out but one of the things we've done whenever we were introducing the times tables she found some of the you know four times eight or six times seven or seven times eight a bit trickier so this book called tables fables was quite a nice one where it had different characters for instance dr sven she's in the shape of a seven a snowman that's in the shape of an eight and there's a little story and we would have read that a few times over the course of a week or two and then we found that our daughter was remembering the the answers to the multiplications from the story and then eventually the book sort of just got put to the side and using TT Rock, so she then just knew the answers. So it's just quite a nice one to sort of reinforce the times tables in a, in a, in a different way, really. And um, also using stuff like the, the Numicon that was quite useful for that as well. So these are some of the resources that we found quite useful. Um, other things I would say is obviously if you've got things like money, you know, having your coins can be quite good, having the physical coins when we're talking about money questions. So they're quite useful as well. So using what's around you. Okay. So we've talked a bit about you know, what we say, making it fun, resources. Now I'm gonna talk a bit about Corporate Maths Primary. There's some resources on my website, that, particularly that I made, them, I made them and they were really useful for the schools that I was supporting. But as a parent, I've actually found them absolutely phenomenal. And I know I might sound biased because it's my resources, but in terms of our daughter, she's really flourished. And I would say one of the key things has been the five a day. 
So in terms of the five a days, there's five different levels of difficulty, four different levels of difficulty. We have got on the primary website of bronze. They would be broadly aimed at students in year four, or if you're in Northern Ireland, P5. And I say broadly because I've designed these to be like the reading books that they use in English, where there's the different levels and they just go up through the levels whenever they're ready for them. And so for instance, our daughter had done bronze before year four uh, because she was ready for it, but obviously some students may do this in year four, some might do it a bit earlier, some might do it later and so on. So we've got the bronze, uh, divisions, multi, uh, divisions, additions, reading scales, money questions, shapes and 3D shapes, things like that. Then we've got the silver. The silver five a day will be aimed usually at students in year five or P6 in Northern Ireland. And it's just getting a bit more complicated factors, multiples, angle facts, things like that. Then we've got gold. And if students can do gold by the end of primary school, so year six or P7 in Northern Ireland, they're doing phenomenally well. Or if they're in the transfer test, that's a really good level to be on. So you've got some like cube numbers, equivalent fractions, things like that with this gold and then because obviously you want something for everyone we've also got the platinum version the platinum version covers what's in the primary school curriculum and goes a bit further actually so for your real clever clogs that's there for them as well also if you want to print books there's the numeracy five a day on the website the called maths website and they would be sort of in line with difficulty of the silver and gold so our daughter would use those as well so in terms of these whenever we introduced the bronze of our daughter she was able to do maybe half of the questions and half of the questions she maybe needed a bit of guidance and support on and you know i would sort of go through and explain some of those with her over the course of a week or two, she was thinking the hang of everything or nearly everything, and she was able to fly through those and do them herself within the sort of the course of a month, we sort of with the things she was doing in school, and also by us regularly coming back to these five a days. And the idea is that little and often, and with it being little and often, then it was really sticking with her. And in terms of these five a days, she should take about five minutes each, and we would say, because you know, with her iPad, we can see her screen time and say, well, if she's on her iPad for an hour, it's really fair to do five minutes of these and we would say well if you want a bit more time do your five a days then you can have a bit more time and so on and we've used them you know in terms of you know if you do your five a days then we can go off and do something fun or you know using it as a bit of a you know reward by doing those and we can go off and do something else and um, but she's really she really loves them and we did them most days a week not every day because things come up clubs and things like that but she would normally and as i said she's eight she does the bronze the silver and the gold she can do all of the bronze and then we moved her up to the silver bit of support for a while and then she could do all of those and then by the time she got to the goal she's now on the goal and she can probably do most of those there's one or two questions that she struggles on now and as i said uh, she's flying through them and really flourishing it's just that little and often approach and then she's much more confident in school because they've just been introduced to call um short division the other day with uh, you know brush your mouth and so on and she's like dad i've done this at home this is fantastic and she feels much more confident in school which is great as well so the five days would highly highly recommend those and then also, as well as the five days, we've got the revision cards or the study cards. And here we've got the study cards. There's 72 different revision cards or study cards. And the other day, she, our daughter had her homework on fractions of amounts. And she did a bit of a recap. So what she did was she went and got her study card. She got the fractions of amount card. And it sort of recapped how to do different aspects. You know, to find three quarters of 28. We divide by four to get a quarter, which is seven. And then we multiply by three to get three quarters, which would be 21. So the revision card actually just gave her the advice she needed for that. But there's also the video tutorial some questions and answers so we would often stick those around the kitchen table and that would be a fantastic way to support really reinforce what she's learning in school at home as well so those study cards are really useful for you and then also I'd recommend other websites so and these are not have been asked to promote any of these these are just uh, websites that i find useful as a parent i highly recommend tt rockstars it's great in terms of uh, times tables also we've used mathletics and our daughter has found that useful as well and called the last primary i'd highly recommend that obviously um, but in terms of support at home what i would recommend is what we say really counts make it fun hands-on activities taking the opportunities and looking at the maps around us and just asking okay like that bottle holds two liters if i needed six liters of milk you know how much how many bottles of milk would i need and things like that games the maps around us resources some physical resources can be really useful as well and the five a day is the one that i would highly highly recommend and also the study cards and websites such as tt rockstars i really hope you found those suggestions useful as i said they've really made a big difference with our own children and they're absolutely flourishing with their mathematics and i really hope that you know they'll help you with your child as well so thank you so much all the best cheers bye bye